Today the Franciscans celebrate the feast of St. Bernardine of Siena, known as the Apostle of Italy. He was born actually on Our Lady's birthday, September 8th, the year 1380. He died today. May 20th, 1444. By the age of six, Bernardine was an orphan. He had lost both his mother and his father, and he was entrusted at that time to the care of his aunt, who was a pious woman who was poor and blind and, and bedridden. She was very sick, and during her aunt's illness, all she could do was say one thing the whole time. And if you know St. Bernardine's life and his missionary work, I bet you could guess what that one thing was. You know, all his aunt actually could say during her illness was to repeat over and over again the holy name of Jesus. Isn't that interesting? Because that's, of course, what St. Bernardine eventually became famous for, for preaching devotion to Jesus' name. St. Bernardine watched over that sickly aunt until she died. And again, it was through her, the sickly and devout aunt, that he learned the devotion that would that he would carry out through all of Italy, as it were, the devotion to the holy name, the name above every other name, as St. Paul says in Philippians 2.9. At 12 years old, he went to continue his studies in Siena, and his biographers said that he fell in love with a beautiful woman whose image was painted on one of the doors of the city gates at the port, at the Porta Camoglia. Porta Camoglia. A beautiful image was painted there, and the beautiful woman that was painted there was Our Lady. Uh, and it makes sense that, you know, if St. Bernardine was born on Our Lady's birthday, then she would end up having a great place in his heart and in his life. It should also be a reminder to us, that little story of the painting, uh, just how important it is to make Our Lady beautiful in whatever images or statues that we make of her. You know, we can never, of course, make her as beautiful as she is, as beautiful as God has made her, but we should at least give it our best when drawing or making images of her. Even the most beautiful woman in the world right now, we could say if you took the most beautiful woman on the planet and put her next to Our Lady, uh, you know, with all due respect, she'd look like a hag compared to, to Our Blessed Mother. She'd look terrible. Uh, when St. Bernardine was 20 years old, he went to live with a friend so that he could discern his vocation and give himself over to various extraordinary penances. Uh, one day he was actually praying in front of a crucifix and he heard these words uh, come to him. The words were, you see me naked, divested of everything, and nailed to a cross for love of you. If you love me, then you too must divest yourself of everything and live a crucified life. The words said, obviously the words of our Savior. So on September 8th, 1402, again, Bernardine's birthday and also Our Lady's birthday on that day, St. Bernardine gave all his possessions away and he entered the Franciscan order. The brothers in his community thought that he had, uh, they said in Italian, un corpo di bronzo, basically uh, a body made of bronze because of all the penances and fasts and prayer vigils that he did as a friar. A few years later, in about the year 1408, he was present at a sermon preached by the great Dominican uh, friar, the great preacher, St. Vincent Ferrer, in Alexandria, a town in Italy. And at one point in the sermon, St. Vincent actually interrupted what he was preaching, and he said this. He said, I'm going to return to evangelize France and Spain, because among you there's a friar minor who will preach the word of God in all of Italy, as it's never been heard before, said St. Vincent. That unnamed friar was, of course, Father Bernardine at the time. And if you think about it, it's no, it's no small thing for a Dominican to give way to a Franciscan when it comes to preaching. Uh, it's one of the proofs that St. Vincent was a saint. As far as preaching goes, St. Bernardine's voice was described as weak and hoarse and defective. So how does a Franciscan with a weak and defective voice become one of the greatest preachers of his time? Well, one night, as he was praying for help with his oratory skills, which he didn't have, he said he saw a luminous globe descend from the sky. The globe came down to him, touched his throat, and then disappeared. And from that moment on, he actually had the gift of preaching. That miraculous event would later be attributed to Our Lady's intercession for him. 
Even the blessed John Duns Scotus, the great Franciscan theologian a century before St. Bernadine, even he was said to be a bit slow and dense as far as intelligence goes. He wasn't said to be very bright, that is, until he prayed to Our Lady to ask for help with that. And through her intercession, we know that Scotus became one of the greatest minds in truth, uh, one of the greatest minds in the history of the Church. St. Bernardine's 30-plus years of preaching was accompanied by many miracles as well. He once raised a man from the dead in Verona in 1422. And another time in Mantova, another city in Italy, when a boatsman refused to bring him to the Franciscan convent there, St. Bernardine took his mantle off, he placed it, his cloak, he placed it on the river, and he climbed onto it with his brother, and uh, they both sailed to the convent, as it were, on his cloak, on his mantle. The people of Bologna were converted to the love of their neighbors through the preaching of St. Bernardine and his preaching of the holy name of Jesus. And to this day, in the Piazza del Campo, which is the main square in Siena, in that piazza, there's a written on one of the municipal buildings, on the principal municipal building there, in big letters, the IHS, the monogram of the holy name of Jesus, Jesus Ominum Salvator in Latin. And it's written there in memory of St. Bernardine's preaching in that city. The monogram is surrounded by 12 large rays of the sun. The 12 rays symbolize the 12 articles of the Apostles' Creed. Creed. And it's also surrounded by eight smaller rays, and those, those rays symbolize the eight Beatitudes. So the monogram, the IHS, which is famous now as a Jesuit, uh, the symbol of the Jesuits, even Pope Francis has put it on his coat of arms, that motto has actually been borrowed by, from the Franciscans. It was actually ours first. We've let the Jesuits borrow it for 500 years. There are many other details that we'd like to share about St. Bernardine's life, especially all the difficulties that he went through, but of course time is limited. Two things we just want to walk away from with his story. One, uh, let's try to be more attentive to how the Lord speaks to us in our lives as he spoke to St. Bernardine when he was very young, giving him a preview of his future mission by means of his sickly aunt, the aunt who could only say the holy name of Jesus. Jesus in her sickness. So let's learn to see our Lord's footsteps in our lives, uh, as it were, in that sense. Second thing we want to take away from St. Bernardine's life is simply to learn to truly love Our Lady. Whatever we need, whatever we're lacking, whatever we're called to do, she'll help us if we ask her. She lives to love us, so let's, let's live to love her in return.